And a man said, Speak to us of self-knowledge. And he answered, saying, Your hearts know in silence the secrets of the days and the nights, but your ears thirst for the sound of your heart's knowledge. You would know in words that which you have always known in thought. You would touch with your fingers the naked body of your dreams, and it is well that you should. The hidden wellspring of your soul must needs rise and run, murmuring to the sea. And the treasure of your infinite depths would be revealed to your eyes. But let there be no scales to weigh your unknown treasure, and seek not the depths of your knowledge with staff or sounding line. For a self is a sea boundless and measureless. Say not, I have found the truth, but rather, I have found a truth. Say not, I have found the path of the soul. Say rather, I have met the soul walking upon my path. For the soul walks upon all paths. The soul walks not upon a line, neither does it grow like a reed. The soul unfolds itself like a lotus of countless petals. We are tuned in to fitness and consciousness. That was from The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. This episode is called Path Notes of the Mystic. And I'm thinking of renaming the whole podcast. So I normally name the episodes. And of course, the fit, the podcast is called fitness and consciousness but i've been getting more away from the fitness so it made sense at first maybe it still does maybe it still makes great sense because okay well what am i known for i'm a fitness guy i've been a strength conditioning instructor for 20 years um so it kind of made sense and most of my guests were somewhere in the fitness martial arts realm at first and then I started to get more ones that were more into like spirituality and some doctors and psychologists and some, some people from all, all sorts of professions and as I start to like look forward like I was having somebody was planning on coming on the podcast and she was like um, it's like, well, I'm not sure how I can relate what I'm doing to fitness, but like, it doesn't have to have anything to do with fitness. And you can stretch the, the meaning of fitness to like mental fitness, spiritual fitness. But I was just considering calling the whole podcast Path Notes of the Mystic. And so I didn't want it to sound too corny. I've had other, I've done two other episodes called Path Notes of the Skeptical Mystic, but I thought I could leave out the word skeptical. Um, so here's the definition of the word mystic. A person who claims to attain or believes in the possibility of attaining insight into mysteries transcending ordinary human knowledge as by direct communication with the divine or immediate intuition in a state of spiritual ecstasy. So I didn't want it to sound like this like corny sort of thing. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I've just been thinking about it. I thought maybe I should, do I want to get rid of the word fitness and the name and then have it to be some other thing? And I've somewhat secured the name, Path Notes of the Mystic and Path Notes of the Skeptical Mystic. Uh, I've done it various ways. Uh, I'm going to read something else. This is from uh, Tom Brown Jr.'s book, Grandfather. Now going well into my third week alone, I began to feel a prisoner of this aloneness. I thought frequently about going out of the woods and heading back home for a while. 
I even considered going to one of the closer houses just to watch people for a while. My conversations with myself were becoming rather lengthy and complicated. I even began to answer myself, frequently thinking out loud. After a while, all I could think about was how alone and abandoned I felt. The aloneness saturated my every mood to a point where I could think of nothing else at all. I so desperately wanted to share so much of what I had done over the past several weeks with someone, anyone. At this point, I began to doubt myself. I thought that if I were to ever understand what grandfather did, I would have to love to be alone. Right then, I hated it with a passion. So uh, today is July 7th, 2019. Uh, July 3rd of seven years ago, I uh, had my last drink of alcohol and my last uh, smoke of weed. Uh, I normally wouldn't even, even at that time, I didn't tell very many people that I smoked. Usually if I met someone and they asked me, I would say no. But I had some people that I, I would smoke with and Um, I've explained it on a, a few shows, but to briefly recap, what happened was I was driving a cab and I started picking up, I'm, I'm trying to make this a, a short, shorter version of the story. Maybe I should just tell it. Uh, so I get a call uh, through the uh, through the dispatch, it comes up on the computer to pick this person up, and I pick her up, and she sits in the back, and I take her to work, and we start having these like spiritual conversation. This spiritual conversation, um, I believe, um, maybe maybe not so much even on the first. I don't even remember this first one. So I took her to work, and then a couple weeks later. She called me again, or she called me directly, rather. She called my cell phone instead of into the dispatch. And I pick her up. She sits in the front this time. And we start having, like, these spiritual conversations. And um, I got to be where I was picking her up pretty much every day. A lot of times I would take her to and from work pretty much every day, Monday through Friday. And... I think she was like an angel or a bodhisattva or something, something like that. So after a couple, two, three months of seeing her almost every day, um, so I would get to, even before this last day, I would, we'd have these conversations and I would be dropping her off at home at her apartment and, She'd sit in the car and we'd talk for another 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever and about the spiritual thing, spiritual things. She seemed to know everything in a very easy way, not preachy, not a know-it-all, just uh, she just seemed to know everything there was to know. And I was dropping her off this last day and it, the best way I'd explain it is like she showed me her she showed me my potential she didn't say anything about it she never told me to quit drinking or anything like that I knew that she didn't drink it it came up but it was not there was no <laughs> lecture or anything and so what do I mean? She showed me my potential. It was like the message that I got was uh, you have to become a magnet for what you want to attract. She didn't say those words either. Okay, this is just the message that I got. And so I went home. I had my last beer. I didn't even finish all of it. And my last, like I had a half a joint left and I finished it up. I fell asleep and I, I woke up and when I woke up, I knocked over my beer it had not very much left in it, but the smell was just 
horrible. It smelled like a million rotten beers. It was so exaggerated, like a million times exaggerated. It was just awful. And it ended up being the last day that I ever drank or smoked. This was seven years ago. Just turned seven years ago, uh, July 3rd. Today's July 7th. Never saw her again. So it's like, if you see the show Touched by an Angel, the angels, they come to town uh, for, because somebody needs to make some kind of change in their life. And they're just there to, and they might be working as a waitress. Or there's a couple main angels. There's a few other ones, but this, uh, they might, they're, they're working at some diner or they're working at, they're doing whatever they need to be to put themselves in this person's life to make this change and move on after the change is made they're off so it was like she just like turned the dial and was off never heard from her again i've tried to look her up even somewhat recently and so up until that point I was, I lived almost like a monk and like after I was with my son's mom, which I've told some of that on a couple episodes ago or so, uh, she, uh, was very, very difficult. Uh, and so I, I knew like after we broke up, I didn't want anything like that again. And so I was, I was like, okay, the next girl I see is going to have to be pretty much perfect. And so um, I would like, you know, like maybe meet a girl through a friend. It's like just nothing. Like, no, no, no. And my buddies, they didn't understand. She's like, what, what are you doing? You, she's good to go. She's into you. What are you doing? And just, no. Nah. Uh, so time goes by, I meet this Bodhisattva angel person that disappears. So about a year goes by and I met, um, uh, a woman who I ended up being with for a couple of years. We lived together. It was a good relationship it left on good terms. Uh, but when you are following this path, it could be different than mine, but once you start like following a, a path, uh, uh, and the path gets more narrow as we go, it gets tough. And then sometimes people aren't with you anymore. You, you look around for your friends, and maybe there's no one there. Because if, if if they want to go out and drink or they want to go out and smoke, and you don't do that anymore, are they going to invite you? So that, that was what I was uh, going through. And, you know, not that I really cared but if they did that, but it does kind of change things. Uh, here's a song by Pink Floyd. It's called Paint Box. Last night I had too much to drink, sitting in a club with so many fools, playing to rules trying to impress but feeling rather empty i had another drink drink a drink a drink a drink what a way to spend that evening they all turn up with their friends playing the game but in the scene i should have been far away 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 getting up i feel as if i'm remembering this scene before i open the door to an empty room then i forget the telephone rings and someone speaks. She would very much like to go out to a show. So what can I do? I can't think what to say. She sees through anyway. Away, 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 away. Out the front door I go. Traffic's moving rather slow. Arriving late, there she waits, looking very angry, as cross as she can be. Be a bee, be a bee. Getting up. I feel as if I'm remembering this scene before I open the door to an empty room, 
then I forget. It's written by Rick Wright, old Pink Floyd song. So if you had to make a change, like you knew this change was happening to come maybe for like months or years or most of your life even, but you somehow have some kind of fear that this decision means you're probably going to, uh, leave some friends on that other path. Your, your path becomes more narrow and branches off of theirs. What do you do? So like after that year of uh, between quitting drinking and meeting, um, the that girlfriend that I was talking about and we broke up, I guess it was almost five years ago now, four years ago, five years ago. But, uh, there was like, I, I don't think I really hung out with anybody. It was, uh, strange time and I'm trying to like piece together like what happened I'd been reading in these books like some qigong book or his yoga books and like one of the qigong books in particular this guy was a qigong master and his his teacher was telling him okay you're you're already a master you can Still teach people, you can keep going on the path you're on, but if you want to get to the highest level, you have to quit drinking, period. And so, uh, I believe he did, and then, so I'm like reading this stuff, at the same time I'm uh, talking to this being, this bodhisattva angel person that was uh, in my cab talking to me, for months and so all these things kind of like just came together and it became obvious and what do you do so have you had to make a decision like that I think a lot of us have they can be you can be kind of at the same place and not at the same place. For instance, I, I went to a concert last weekend with a buddy of mine. Awesome concert, Billy Strings. Amazing guitar player. Amazing guitar player. And uh, so uh, I think my buddy had a drink or two. No, no big deal. I don't, I don't really care. I, I can hang out with a buddy that's drinking at a concert. It's not like I'm, I really care about that, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm drinking water. Uh, and it was this crazy thing where my son's mom ended up being there, which I, I told that story before on the show. But so as the show starts going, you know, people are drinking, they're, they're drinking more and more. I'm not talking about my buddy, but like, for instance, there are, there was this, and I'm not really paying attention too much for around the people around me, but more like what becomes uh, hard to ignore after a while. Now, cause I'm paying attention to the show. I'm watching the musicians. I'm listening. I'm in the moment. And there's this girl kind of like sort of behind me. I kept like, I don't know. She kept like touching her cup to my arm or, something like that, but she's like dancing around and I, I look over, she's not even facing the, the music. She's okay. Think about that. She's not facing the band. She's not facing the music. Right. 
Uh, so, and she's jumping around and she has this cup of some alcoholic drink for sure in her hand. And then she's like turning around and she's kind of like bumping it. She keeps bumping into me and like, God, like and I don't, I don't say anything, but it's like, I kind of like scoot over a little bit. I'm like, come on. She's obviously been drinking a lot. And she's like, ye like kind of like yelling and stuff and hooting and hollering and I'm like, Oh my God. And the audience can really ruin a show. The audience at this show was, was really good. Uh, but she is an example of what is just kind of annoying. So if you're at a concert and you're drunk and yelling, even if it's like, yeah, 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 yay, or whatever. Woo. Are you listening to the band? Cause that's why most of the people are there. That's why we paid the money for tickets to see this band. I didn't pay. I wouldn't pay anything to listen to her hoot and holler. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay. I would have paid an extra, uh, five, $10 or more, maybe even more to, uh, have her shut up. <laughs> Shh. I'm listening to the band. Shut up. Will you quit bumping into me with your drink? And then it's like this full drink then. And like, is she going to spill this drink on me? Like, then I'm like, why am I having to like worry about whether she's going to spill her drink on me? I should be just like in the moment listening to this band, which I mostly was, but she was getting like pretty hard to ignore. So we can be like literally right next to each other, sometimes bumping into each other, her bumping into me is what was happening. But in a way we're in it, we're not anywhere close to being in the same place. Completely removed. If you're enjoying the band, why are you yelling? Like the, the, the people that have to like whistle at the, at the subtle part of the guitar solo, the guitar player gets real quiet. The band's getting quiet and, and she's supposed to like draw you in. It's quiet. So like if, if someone starts talking more quiet, you lean forward and you, you pay even more attention. You're listening. And then some dude whistles real loud and takes you out of that state. Why are you whistling? Here's $5. Shut up. Don't say anything else. Don't whistle. I can't afford to pay everybody to shut up at a concert. But, you know. What do you do? So, this, back to this loneliness. I'll get off this little, little rant here. I found that a lot of people are, I hope I'm not repeating myself. I started recording earlier and then um, started getting real hot in here because I, I closed my windows and I had the air conditioner on before. And then when I started recording, I, I wanted to make sure the air conditioner wasn't getting picked up on the microphone. I, I have like a couple uh, window air conditioners. So um, there's one like, almost within reach of me right now that I turned off and I have one in my room that I, uh, I had them both off earlier. And so I, I turned the one in my room on and a fan to like blow it this way. So I hope the, um, I don't, it doesn't look like the microphone picks up that sound, but I, uh, earlier I was getting like super hot and it was getting distracting. So I um, stopped and started recording the show again. But anyways, uh, so it's, what can we do um, if you're in like some kind of like transition or even not uh, to maybe like reach out to people? Because I've had people recently, and I guess for like a long time, um, are telling me, uh, you know, they're, they're looking to connect with people that are like-minded and not necessarily even like in the same um, 
like religion or something like that, where it's like, okay, I'm going to get together with these people that have like, that are in this box of thinking. And uh, it's more like people that are just on this spiritual path. Theirs looks different than theirs and theirs looks different than mine. And mine looks different than this other person. They all look different. So, but there's some kind of uh, connection. Okay. And so what I've uh, decided to do, I should have started it today, but I had other plans and then they got canceled, uh, changed around and um, ended up waking up real late and stuff. But I'm going to start having like a meet up at my gym. Well, I don't want to say, but for like, I don't have a real big place or otherwise I'd make it more public. But for, I'm going to start, I've already sent the word out and people are interested. I'm going to have people over to the gym like one day a month on a weekend and we'll have coffee or tea and uh, whatever. And people that are just somewhat like-minded that are like looking for these connections can get together. You know, if they want to, do some kind of show off some kind of new exercise thing they've been doing or whatever. Fine. If they want to just talk about business stuff, fine. Talk about whatever people get these cool people together. And here's a, a place for us to connect. And then maybe we can go out, um, meet at the park sometimes or out in the woods or whatever and hang out. A lot of people are really looking for that. And so when we're like, I was reading this, the thing from grandfather, uh, I, I don't know how much I believe, uh, a lot of what Tom Brown Jr. says in his books. I've asked a friend of mine who's been to his classes, like I saw something in, uh, Let's see, I don't want to explain it too much, but I saw something uh, on my phone, the Tom Brown Jr. thing, and I took took a screenshot and sent it to my buddy who had been to his classes before. I'm like, what do you think about this? And he's like, oh, well, Tom, there's a lot of coyote in Tom's teachings, and you can see here there's even a coyote on the book. So like the coyote is like the trickster. Okay, so he might uh, tell a, a story that maybe it didn't really happen. He's telling it like it happened, but it didn't really happen because he's trying to teach you something. Or, uh, and that's what he's teaching, and I'm just speaking from my opinion, uh, or a possibility of what could be true, is don't believe everything you read. <laughs> okay, so he might tell you something that's really just not true, crazy, and the whole point of it is don't believe it. Maybe, maybe that's, I'm not saying that's what he does, but what can you learn from something that maybe isn't even, it, it's like maybe like spiritually true, but not necessarily a fact that happened. I forget what my point was. What, why was I talking about that? I forget what my point was there. But, uh, there's things that we can do. Like I have a couple friends that do sweat lodges. They host sweat lodges and I get invited to those. There's one every month and it's like an honor to be invited. And it's where you can go and you're connecting with people on a somewhat similar path. And sometimes this path might be like, okay, so I'm a vegan and like before I'm like, okay, I'm going to connect with these vegan, this vegan group on Facebook. And I'm like giving my opinion on something. Like one thing was this, this woman had a baby and she was asking uh, people's opinions on like milk and uh, what, and then somebody says something like almond milk. And I chime in, I'm like, almond milk is not really, really milk. And so I, I had just been reading about it, this, that same subject uh, in the book called, 
oh, I forget the name of the must or the name of the book. It's like by Marty Gallagher and some uh, uh, doctor. Is it called like mental mus muscle? I, f I forget the name of it. I wish I could remember, but I, I was just reading about it. So I, I, uh, I, th I took a screenshot of this uh, paragraph written by this doctor and uh, so I gave a non-vegan answer. So I'm a vegan. And I gave this non-vegan answer to this woman who's asking about the health of her baby. And you would think I set their village on fire with some of this, these responses that I got. And it's supposed to be a vegetarian and vegan group. Vegetarian and vegan group. And this one woman in particular just... It must have taken her an hour to type out all of this hatred towards me and my point of view. This woman's asking about the health of her baby. This isn't the time for your ideological nonsense. We're talking about health. So I believe you probably can have healthy vegan babies, probably especially if they're breastfed. And there's people that have been vegan their whole life. They're healthy. Their parents were vegans. That's it can be done. Maybe it can't be done for everyone, but. So here I am thinking I'm joining a tribe of like-minded people. And I found that I, I even like left that group. I was like, whoa. I was like, this is, uh, I remember I was, like driving somewhere afterwards and the Beatles song um, where it goes like um, life is too short and there's no time for fussing and fighting my friends. And so I was like, yeah, that's right. So I, I just left the group. So I, I don't want to get caught. I would, sometimes I would even, I would know better, but I would somehow get caught up in these Facebook typing to some like argument alg algorithm person about, something it's like I don't even know this person why am I spending so much time talking to them when they when they clearly have no desire to uh, uh, harmonize <laughs> Here's a song. Oh, I know there is no place you can go to, and I know you don't know anyone at all. So come walking in the sun with me, my little one, and remember that the only time is now. Well, strange is the story your eyes tell me, and quiet all the few words that you say. So come and hold my hand, for you see I'd understand, and remember that the only time is now. Oh, I come to you, a ragged, laughing stranger, and you come to me, an angel of the night. So I'll dance and we will sing, for it doesn't mean a thing to remember that the only time is now. So forget about your yesterdays of sorrow and forget about the darkness you have seen, for there's only you and me at the edge of an endless sea. And remember that the only time is now. Words by Jerry Garcia. Music by the Grateful Dead. Uh, looks like it was only uh, performed one time in 1966. Um, released November 3rd, 1965, a studio recording on the Golden Road box set. Anyway. So the time is now. How do you want to spend your time? How do you want to spend your now? And interesting enough that uh, I mentioned the sweat lodge. There was just a message from the group. Uh, a couple of the people went on a vision quest. Uh, and started to tell what they, what happened. Uh. So sometimes you might think, okay, I'm a, 
Catholic, I'm a Muslim, I'm a this or a that. And so I'm going to reach out to other Catholics and Muslims or this is and that's is, and we're going to get along just dandy. And then it doesn't work out that way. Uh, see, for me, is when I, I worked at a um, wilderness survival school, nature awareness school, and so I was vegan then. I, I quit eating meat when I was 15 years old. This is 1994. And I've been vegan probably more than half that time. And so there, there's a lot of non-vegan things going on. There's there's hunters and there's skins and there's skulls and there's this kind of stuff all around. But they had a appreciation and respect for nature. It was different than mine, especially when it comes to the animals. It's different than mine. But there was still nothing to argue about. There was no one saying, oh, you need to be a hunter. And I wasn't saying that they need to be a vegan. It was just, uh, it was a really cool place. And I've recommended that place to many, many people to take their kids and themselves and learn different things. So why would a vegan recommend a place that's very non-vegan? <laughs> Why wasn't I recommending some vegan place? Well, I just kind of explained it, didn't I? So there was a, when I think of, uh, I can't remember if I was explaining this on <laughs> this one that I'm recording now or the one before as I was thinking of changing the name of the show to um, Path Notes of the Mystic. And I'm talking to, I asked one person about it. She's an ex-girlfriend of mine actually and she's one of the people that reaches out to me sometimes and talks about wanting to connect with people that are like-minded and, and have, like she feels alone. And I guess she's like, in some way, I don't know if she's still like somewhat seeing this guy. He sounds like a, sounds weak, just like a real weak um, kind of a guy. And, and she even agreed. <laughs> like she was telling me something and I was like, what? Uh, you know, and I had seen pe seen a woman sent, since her, and she, like she was seeing this guy. She was telling me like, he just sounds weak. It's like not necessarily like he can't lift a heavy weight over his head like me, but uh, and she kind of uh, she well she did, pretty much did agree at my conclusion after she told me this, and then but for whatever reason it sounded like she was still somewhat continuing this relationship that sounds like I don't know it doesn't sound like something I would want to be involved in but she still feels alone so she's telling me she still feels alone and it's not like oh we should get back together kind of thing it's uh, she's like somebody that likes to really examine her thinking and consider different uh, points of view in, in herself, uh, different meaning to these things that happen, and exploring consciousness, and can really dig pretty, really dig deep into uh, different subjects. And not everybody wants to do that. I like doing that. And, you know, so when we read, read about these things, whether it's the, uh, the Tom Brown thing or, 
the monks where they, they want to go, uh, they think it's more spiritual to be like alone in a cave somewhere and, you know, some other monk bringing them food uh, every few days or, I think it's probably good to be able to be alone, but it doesn't seem like we're really designed to stay alone. And so we have, she has like this desire to connect and do these and do things. And she's not sure exactly what she reaches out to me about it. So I give some options, some ideas and think through these things. Maybe it was as simple as doing a podcast sometimes, or maybe it's uh, some greater project. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to um, read something random out of, how about the Tao Te Ching? I have a couple copies here, a couple different translations. Let's flip through randomly, see what happens. Okay. Um, let's see. I said random, didn't I? How about the second random? Third or fourth random? I don't know what this will be. 52. All under heaven have a common beginning. This beginning is the mother of the world, having known the mother we may proceed to know her children. Having known the children, we should go back and hold on to the mother. In so doing, you will incur no risk, even though your body be annihilated. Block all the passages, shut all the doors, and to the end of your days, you will not be worn out. Open the passages, multiply your activities, and to the end of your days, you will remain helpless. To see the small is to have insight. To hold on to weakness is to be strong. Use the lights, but return to your insight. Mm. Do not bring calamities upon yourself. This is the way of cultivating the changeless. Sometimes I hope when I read something randomly, it's going to have some uh, uh, profound uh, synchronicity uh, to whatever I was talking about before. Sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. But maybe that was just something you needed to hear. Wanted to hear, like to hear. I usually have several things on my table that I can pick from. Sometimes I pick them out ahead of time. And sometimes I like to just read random, random things. So I look like, what can, what am I, what am I going to do? Am I going to change the name of the show? Uh, I went for a while without reaching out to very many guests to ask on the show. Uh, there was a couple that were planning on coming on. Uh, sometimes it's hard to schedule, but let's see. Uh, I don't want to talk about those. Sometimes I just like kind of like flip through and pick a poem. A night. Remembrance, August 25th, 9 to 10 a.m. This is by Walt, Walt Whitman. I sit by the edge of the pond, everything quiet. The broad, polished surface spread before me. The blue of the heavens and the white clouds reflected from it. And flitting across, now and then, the reflection of some flying bird. Last night I was down here with a friend till after midnight everything a miracle of splendor, the glory of the stars and the completely rounded moon, the passing clouds, silver and luminous, tawny, now and then masses, vapory, illuminating scud. 
illuminated scud and silently by my side my dear friend the shades of the trees and the patches of moonlight on the grass a softly blowing breeze and just palpable odor of the neighboring ripening corn the indolent and spiritual night inexpressibly rich tender suggestive something altogether to filter through one's soul and nourish and feed and soothe the memory long afterwards. Sometimes we kind of get stuck in the uh, analyzation like so the analyzation leads to paralyzation and I'll do that sometimes myself and like I, I like to practice martial arts and I have a, a couple of people that I train with about once a week. Uh, I have one person that pretty much shows up every week. Uh, someone else was coming kind of regularly. I've had uh, people be like regular on and off, but at my new gym, I don't have a real big space. Um, and so I, I only want to have two people uh, uh, sparring at a time. And so it's just like invitation only thing. I don't like charge money for it or anything. I just, I just ask. And so I'm always thinking like, well, how do I want to practice? What do I think is the best? Cause there's some, Sometimes I'm teaching people, sometimes I'm learning. And like what do I what do I want to teach? I think okay, I'm I'm 40. I don't mind I like to spar, but I don't want to do like hard sparring where I'm getting hit in the head real hard. I don't want to hit anybody else in the head real hard. But I want to have an effective style and effective pr practice. It's like with grappling, you can go pretty hard um, safely. But it's like, it's not ev everything. So, so we, we can do like striking on the ground, but you don't want to just like punch your friends. Like one of my main training partners is a female. I can't just be like blasting her in the face with elbows. It's not cool. Um, but I want to like, help her prepare for if there's like a, a real world situation where she needs to defend herself. So I've been to like these different classes and I see some faults for what I think is ideal in pretty much all the ones I've been to. And I trained with like this friend of mine uh, the other day, yesterday actually went out to his place. He's a really good instructor, a lot of experience. Um, I've, I've known him since I was in high school and he's a couple years older than me. And uh, it's like, like a lot of times it's like a reset of what I want. It's like uh, nothing really changes, but so like as I'm talking to these different schools, like I, my work schedule is crazy. I have my own business. I also work at, at a factory. Uh, and so I'm, I have my own business to take care of. And I'm so to say no to a client, a potential client. Oh, I can't go to that time. Cause I'm going, I have martial arts class to go to, which costs me money. And so it's like, I'm trying to like build my business. So that's all I, all I need to do. And so like, I don't want to sign a contract. Uh, and a lot of places they want you to sign a contract. And so there's a couple other places where you don't have to sign one. And I'm keep looking into all these different ones. So what can happen is I don't end up going. So I'm like, I keep, I keep like looking. And so the, the point is, even though these different places are not my ideal, like how could they have the same ideal as me? That would be crazy. 
to have someone else think like that. So it, the answer is to go to the classes. And yes, maybe it's not, maybe they don't do exa things exactly how I think they should go, but it's still good to uh, um, practice these ways. Uh, so the, the point is, like, we have to make sure we don't just get caught up in uh, like the analyzation, parallelization. So if whatever it is that you're doing, if it's something like that, as simple as like joining the, a, a, a class of some sort that's not quite what you want, but it's close, while you can still like look for something else. Well, you can kind of be that also you can you can be like you're you're offering something to people that's yourself because that's all you can really offer you know that's like a ram dos thing it's like all you can really offer someone is is yourself and so whether it's me hosting like a little coffee and tea get together once a month for some people to get to know each other and connect or you know martial arts class that's um, particular way you can you can do like something you just like keep going it's like do you have something like that that you're working towards or it's like yeah there was somebody I know she was um, uh, Let's say she was like in the kind of in the health and fitness field. I don't want to say exactly what, but she was going to come on the show and she we were planning on it. And then she's like, Oh, actually, uh, I'm trying to figure out this paradigm I'm working on. And once I figure that out, then I, I want to come on. I'm like, okay, cool. No rush. Just let me know. And then she, meets a, a medium like a psychic medium and decides to pretty much like throw that away and then she's like well i ordered this book and this book is some something i want to learn so i'm going to like read this book and then i'll um learn more about what it is i'm trying to do and then come on the show and I'm like, okay i just keep okay that, that's fine and so what will happen you know, to me, it's like, just, just come on the show. Let's have this conversation. So uh, she knows that she could come on any time. But sometimes we get stuck in this sort of um, limbo where it's like not really in or out. You're, uh, I mean, it's good to like keep studying stuff. But sometimes you just got to kind of, just do it. Like, are you ever quite ready? People say like, oh, we'll have kids when we're ready. Oh, you're not going to be ready for having kids. Uh, you have the kids and then you figure it out. Sure, it's nice if you have enough money to take care of them and the place and the, all your stuff together like that. But to uh, think that you're going to be prepared for what happens when the child is born, there is no preparation that's, uh, sufficient All right so as I think what am I what am I doing so am I just like waiting to have this these perfect ideas for the podcast and then do one I do think out the show I, I, I think it through I think I, don't, I think <laughs> Uh, I'm going to start doing maybe more shows through the week, maybe even one. I don't know if I can qu quite do it yet. I'm, I might be able to, my work schedule is so crazy and I, I don't want to put out just stuff to put it out, but I'm thinking maybe I'll have a, a show that I do almost every day, maybe like a, a Monday through Friday. And maybe it's just like, uh, breaks down a particular like thought or, or something in particular that's like 20 minutes, a half hour, maybe it ends up being more. I, I don't know. 
but maybe I'll do like a short show uh, Monday through Friday. And then on uh, Sundays, I'll have a, a longer show or I'll have like guests. I'm starting to reach out to more guests now. I'm, I'm, I, was, I was going through this thing like, who do I want to invite? Yeah, I can have more fitness people on. That's cool. I can have, it's like, what am I, what am I doing? What's this direction? And I have a lot of my own mind to explore, which is like part of this. So it's not like I'm having these, put it in a box. Here it is perfectly wrapped. Here's my thoughts for you. Well, you should be really grateful for this. It's more like, here's these things that I have that I'm thinking through. Here's my thoughts on it. And it's all a work in progress. It's all, there is no, um, you know, put a stamp on it. It's done. Send it out. It's, it's being sent out in a fluid state. This is the current state of the flow. I hope that makes sense. Cause that's all we can do anyway. Right? So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show up now. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. The show does very well. And if you want to support the show, you can, the show is on Patreon. You can support the show for as little as a dollar per month. It's also on Podbean. It's an app. Uh, you can, same thing. You can support the show for a dollar a month if, or more if you want. Um, most people just listen to the show. The show is also on YouTube. You can listen to all the shows for free on, on any platform and the support is completely optional. So if you want to get a hold of me about show ideas, you want to know my thoughts on something, you can send me a message fitness and consciousness at gmail.com. Again, thank you all for tuning in. See you next time.